Hey everyone, are you interested in upgrading a laptop, maybe a desktop, or just simply want to keep your equipment out of a landfill and maybe get more performance out of it even? Well, on our podcast show this week, we're going to show you how to do just that. Uh, again, we've teamed up with Kingston to try a lot of their different solutions. So a lot of the things that we're sharing with you today on our podcast show this week, we've actually opened the box, we've put it in our systems, we tried things yeah. out, and we yeah. wanted to relay that information to you. Mm -hmm. uh, Kingston is, of course, one of the biggest memory manufacturers in the world, they're independent, and they're based in Fountain Valley, California, which is fantastic. And we've been working with them to kind of come up with some really awesome ways for you to get those upgrades. Yeah. And most most importantly, we're gonna to try to save you some money in this in this guide. So stay tuned, we're gonna cover a lot of different things. And if there's any questions, please make sure that you leave them in the comments because we've got Kingston looking over the comments as well too. So if you have any questions, let us know. And uh, of course, we've also got our friend Rex here that will be accompanying us <laughs> through all these upgrades and everything like that. So yep. uh, stick around for more of this information that you have to have uh, for your laptop, your desktop upgrades coming down the road, and maybe even some things that you didn't even know that you could do with an older desktop system. Now, with me every week is Winston. And Winston, you've got an interesting upgrade story, don't you? Yeah, yeah. A very old school story. Okay, so uh, my very first memory upgrade was on the Commodore Amiga. I remember that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it had 512K, not meg or gig, 512K of RAM. That's plenty for anyone, right? On board, back in the day, 16-bit, yeah. But anyway, so I've upgraded it to a whopping one megabytes of RAM using a, a 512K memory add-on module. Mm -hmm. um, but it was expensive at the time. Yeah, very expensive. But uh, for PC, I remember my uh, 386 and 486, uh, we used something called EDO RAM or SD RAM. Um, four megabytes, they went into four megabytes, eight megabytes, and 60 megabytes, I think it was. Uh, and they moved on to Pentiums, uh, the newer generation of PCs. Um, they used DDR RAM, so double data rate. And um, they turned on to DDR2, DDR3, of course, DDR5, now DDR5. Yeah, so let's loads. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, using um, this DDR5 RAM with the newest uh, Intel core processors. So um, that's it for okay. me. Okay, I'm gonna have to cut that short because uh, I, I'm gonna share my story real quick. I had tried the graphics card back in the 90s. Uh, I had two sockets on it that I wanted to fill. I found a manufacturer in town at the time, it was called Pharonix. They had the memory modules in stock. So I actually went down there and picked them up. I mm. put them in the card, but it did nothing for Windows 3.1 performance. So sometimes uh, upgrades, don't actually provide any <laughs> tangible benefits. So hopefully some of the things that we talk about today will provide those benefits to you immediately. So uh, that's what we're talking about. Mm. We're going to be, first of all, talking about the desktop computer. Now the desktop computer is obviously the easiest way for you to upgrade because it's open, it's big, and there's a lot of things that you can do with it uh, of, of all things, right? Uh, you can do the upgrades in newer desktop PCs or custom built systems as well too. Mm. Uh, I'll cover older systems in a little bit, but I'm gonna let Winston take the wheel on this because he off obviously has a little bit more experience in newer desktops. So I'm gonna talk yeah. to you about that. Yeah, so in most desktops, you will find something called a motherboard and that's the actual base uh, PCB where you have all the components, processor, RAM, all that kind of sure, stuff. Sure, let's like. have a look at that. So yeah, we have it right here. So here we go. It, it looks something like this, right? So it, it might look a bit, uh, techy and overwhelming, but yeah, it's simply quite, you know, there's a CPU socket there, that's where your CPU, central processing unit, and you've got some slots for expansion, like graphics card, and then this is the RAM slot, what we call DIMM slots, and you usually have four of them in there. And um, I've installed two RAM in, inside here, you see that, that's the Kingston uh, RAM, Fury RAM, and uh, most new motherboards, you need to be aware that you need to slot the RAM, firstly, on the slot A2 and B2. Uh, that's the only way to do it so that you can get the full speed benefits and what we call XMP. So um, give you a, a quick um, history. So uh, if you bought your PC with the last uh, two, maybe like three or four years, um, the chances are you'll be using DDR4 RAM. And um, with default speeds around what, 21 to 33 megahertz. And these are plenty affordable RAM you can get actually because they're the previous generation. Um, memory upgrades available on the market. There's plenty of Kingston does them as well. Um, and they're quite affordable. So, so you know, there's, there's a good chance you can upgrade those. The more RAM you have, the better because it runs applications, uh, browsers, plenty of, you know, Chrome uses a lot of RAM. So, you know, it helps with that. Um, yeah, go to the motherboards manufacturing uh, website. 
uh, there's plenty of uh, information on how to upgrade the RAM and what type of RAM you can use. Uh, something called a QVL list, qualified vendors list. And that is basically a compatibility list of all the RAM that you can get on the market. All right, moving on to DDR5, the more current uh, hardware that you can get, like the one I showed you. Um, so with DDR5 RAM, they run higher speeds. Uh, they start from 4,800 megahertz or higher. Some of them go up to 8,000. So that's the really good memory high speeds, but they're a little bit more expensive, but that's, you know, with newer stuff. Okay, I'm yeah. going to ask a question because this has been uh, something that everyone's wondering is faster memory, faster speeds. What does it help you with? What it, is the problem that it solves? With the faster RAM, it means that you're able to switch between different applications quicker, and it will allow you to uh, render if you're doing a lot of rendering. Okay. Uh, Photoshop, video editing. A lot of influencers now use a lot of video editing yep. tools. Uh, Photoshop, uh, Premiere, and things like that. It will help run the system faster. Rendering time okay. will be reduced. So it will reduce re rendering times. Yeah. Now, I noticed that you only had two of those slots populated. What's That's the right. benefit of having all the slots populated? If you have more RAM, then of course, uh, two slots allow you to run uh, dual channel mode. Okay, so, but with all four slots, you can run uh, dual channel mode. That's no problem having all four, uh, four slots populated. The only issue is that you need to be aware of is that with four slots op uh, populated, you can't run at high speed RAM. Okay. All with right? all four speeds, it has to default to a, a lower speed, like, but you get quad channel. So basically like yeah. more highways on the lane, mm -hmm. uh, more more lanes on the highway. But you can't run at a high speed. Okay. Right. So what's uh, so you don't get the higher speed, but you also get but you also get more overall performance. Y yes, yes. Right? The bandwidth is a lot of okay. width wider, right? So it's like you get a lot more data output and stuff like that. But Plus you can't in install the RAM incorrectly because all four slots all four slots are yeah. populated. So if you have a kit, memory kit that comes in two, then slot A, two, and B2 needs to be uh, okay. first populated, right? But if you have a kit with four RAM, then put them all in. No all right. Problem. So like, if you have a mother, obviously the QVL, very important. Yes, uh, yes. Also, uh, the other factor is that, uh, as we mentioned in our back to school guide, mm -hmm. when you're buying a system uh, off the shelf from Dell or Asus and you're not building a custom PC, yep. uh, there's a trick that we often do is that we would buy the GPU and the CPU that we want. <laughs> and then we would actually cheap out on the memory and the SSD because the upgrades that they offer incrementally are extremely expensive. Yeah. Uh, so on the Kingston website, you can actually search for those laptops and, uh, and desktops mm -hmm. that are upgradable and Kingston gives you every option, right? That's right, yeah. So with the uh, desktops that you get from like Dell and other places like that, they're, they're kind of uh, pre-built systems and they usually offer lower memory speeds because it saves them money, yeah. right? And it obviously uh, passes the savings to you guys. Um, that's fine, but then you think about uh, upgrading that RAM later on. So they usually put two slots of memory in there. So that's being occupied. You can have this two more space slots. You can actually upgrade your memory or whip the old one out and put a whole new memory system in there. That's actually a, a very good point that you bring up because we used to say that you can't mix memory. Is that still true? Um, you you can you can mix memory. That's not a problem. I, I've seen people mix memory, no 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 issues at all. But uh, it, of course, if you want um compatibility and uh better performance in terms of like no glitches or you know at random crashes, you probably want to go with the same memory. So if it's mission critical, it's something that you rely on every day, like a like a desktop system for content creation. You're rendering mm. for hours, and if that one glitch comes up, that's the weird pixel on, on the one <laughs> one frame, that's something that you can't afford. You should be buying matched modules, right? It is best, it is best, okay. yeah. yeah. All right, now I, I also know that Kingston, uh, when they do this testing, it's usually with, uh, they, and they work with all the major players, Aces, uh, whoever, that build desktop systems already built mm. if you're not building by yourself. Uh, they're oftentimes they test things, but they're testing the first or, or second revision of the motherboard or the desktop system combinations down the road, they're supported. They often don't find. Um, how would you recommend people progress with maybe, let's just say that the motherboard that you had in your hand only yeah. had a 32 gigabyte supported kit. Mm -hmm. How would you find a way to go to 64 or 128? How would you experiment and find that out? Yeah, so most motherboard manufacturers website, uh, like I said, the revision of the boards, they have some, of course, the BIOS updates. You can check that. And most BIOS updates are quite easy to do now these days. Before you have you have to like download the file, you have to reboot it, put the USB in, that kind of stuff. Now you can actually do it 
uh, on the desktop or using a, a BIOS flashback button, which most motherboards will have now. And that allows you then to download the file, put it in and it updates the BIOS. And that allows you then to run high speed RAM or more capacity RAM, things like that. So okay. yeah, check that out. Uh, again, more guides on uh, online. There's plenty of resources, YouTube, it's plenty of information get out there. So chances are, Kingston may not even be aware down the road that there might be these upgrades because the manufacturers are moving so quickly, right? Yeah, yeah, because okay. I think everybody wants the, the high speed RAM, which again, it helps with a lot of the, like I said, mission critical applications like uh, rendering and and content creation, stuff like that. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's to the benefit of both the user and the manufacturer to figure out or find out uh, better ways to upgrade the RAM and the RAM speeds and stuff like that. Okay, great. Uh, so that's for newer systems, for mm. pre-built systems that you've already bought, maybe one or two years old max, uh, or even a, a custom built system that you already purchased, yeah. but you're like, I didn't know what I wanted before, but now I know exactly what I want and I needed more hard drive space or an extra SSD. Yeah, there's one more thing I need to point out. Um, there are AMT, AMD systems and Intel systems, of course, people out there know. Um, certain RAM that works well on Intel may not work well on AMD. So you need to double check on that. Uh, Intel have released something called XMP, which is uh, Extreme Memory Profiles, which allow users to run the, the, the speed of the RAM higher, right? At uh, default, which is great. But then put them onto the AMD system, it may not work well. So um, what I found out with Kingston is that they, their memory, um, this is true with Kingston, most mm. Kingston memory, is that it's compatible with both AMD Expo and Intel XMP, oh, which is great. Nice. So if you change teams, you don't have to throw out the memory. Exactly. Very good value. Excellent value. Yeah. And I also just found out recently from our friends at Kingston is mm -hmm. that they also have this uh, this little bot at the bottom of their website. If you go there and you're not finding your motherboard or your desktop system, you can actually check in with the bot there and send a message to their support team. They'll actually get back to you mm -hmm. on what options there are available. And again, talking to those upgrades that are not published, they can't update their website all the time. So maybe one of the technicians do have a uh, a tested system they're just working on, but they can give you some guidance to that yeah. as well too, mm -hmm. including where to buy the memory uh, in, in your neck of the woods. In Canada, mm -hmm. we're looking at Canada Computers, Memory Express, and also of course, Amazon as well too. All right, so uh, a lot of people have older systems. This yeah. is probably talking about systems three, five years old. I mean, my desktop system at home is actually a, um, <laughs> Dell Precision Workstation 3610. This is okay. circa 2017, 2016. Offlease probably came from electric, uh, uh, EA from their okay. closet. So this system was brand new when I got it. It looked like it had never been used. So hmm. I take more of a green approach because I, I just stopped building systems wholly. I just want to you know kind of take the best value because this, this, hmm. this system is older. It's half the price, maybe a third of the price. It's off lease, it's clean. And then I find out that all the memory, DDR4, all the SSDs are available at rock bottom prices. I've already upgraded my GPU. And if you bought a new system, you would be buying the GPU that you needed right off the box, mm -hmm. right out of the bat. But in this case, I was able to upgrade the GPU at a reasonable price. I was able to upgrade the CPU. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about some of the things that you need yeah. to take into consideration when you go with something just a little bit more vintage. Uh, so obviously I've talked about most of the benefits, which is it's cheap, 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 very cheap, right? Uh, it's also easier for you to find upgrades because Kingston will upgrade their guides constantly. Mm -hmm. So as this a system ages with new BIOS revisions and as you're aware of these new compatibilities, they will upgrade that compatibility as well too. Yeah. So if you go to the Kingston website with a three to four year old system and you're looking for DDR3 or DDR4, you're gonna have more options than you did a few years ago when your system was brand new. That's a benefit, right? right. Uh, and of course, you can if you don't wanna go brand new, it's perfectly okay. We wanna keep less stuff out of the landfills. So you can also go to the computer swap meets, Facebook marketplace, <laughs> Uh, there's tons of computer stores that actually sell used stuff as well too. Yeah. Or yeah. you can take uh, buy a system, a uh, second system, and cannibalize, cannibalize it, yeah. and actually put the best parts into one system. That's right. I mean, uh, I, I've got used systems, and I use them a lot because it's just for browsing, bit of you know YouTube and stuff like that. It, you don't really need. Uh, a brand new system, latest process, the latest RAM. I mean, if you have an existing system that works okay and it's still running, no problems, then why not upgrade the RAM to have more browsers, I guess, <laughs> yeah. and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah, we we're definitely need more RAM for those emotional support uh, Chrome tabs. But of <laughs> course, with some of the disadvantages, and this is just this is just stuff that you need to be aware of is that maybe the BIOS uh, may not be updated. So you may not be able to take advantage of later hardware. Mm. BIOS could be locked. So, you know, 
check with Kingston's website to see oh, yeah, if your definitely. system has some upgrade ability. Yeah. Sometimes they list everything that you can do and sometimes it's just not possible. So don't don't be upset that your system isn't upgradable. Maybe you can upgrade it, just not in the conventional sense. And we'll maybe we'll talk about that a little bit here. Um, so again, your standard upgrades, RAM SSD, really yeah. easy. Check with the Kingston website to see what's available. I mean, what have you got there? Show me. You know, I've got, I've oh, got okay. one way All right. that you can actually upgrade. So let's just say that you have an ancient system with no NVMe slot. And this is, you know, the stick of gum memory. If you're at your computer store, you're looking for stuff that looks like this. Okay, this is the Kingston NV2, very affordable upgrade for most people. Uh, this is a two terabyte model. Uh, you'll find them on sale often so that you can get the best possible performance. This is a PCI Express Gen 4 Gen drive. 4. It just runs a little yeah. bit slower, but it's compatible with everything from backwards moving forward as well too, which is great. Uh, how I have done the upgrade here is that, of course, when you have an older system, SATA drives were very common. Yeah, SATA right? drives. So you can upgrade yeah. your SATA drive to make it a uh, an SSD for your system drive and everything like that. Mm -hmm. It's fast, but it's not as fast as the latest systems. So you can you can go for something that is reasonably priced, and then for your backup storage, and everyone has this for their games mm -hmm. and their software, this is where the performance benefits really, really take into effect. Because once you've booted Windows, you're not gonna boot it multiple <laughs> times, okay? So a SATA SSD is actually fine. So this is an interesting upgrade that I did with my Dell Precision right. uh, upgrade, uh, my workstation, is that I took one of these, um, I mean, this is an old HyperX uh, PCI riser card that they used to sell with a Predator SSD on it. Oh, okay. So I put the NV2 on it. This is a two terabyte upgrade, right? Yeah. So I know that a lot of people back then, uh, three, four years ago, they were having a, SS, a SATA drive as their boot drive, mm -hmm. but a secondary one terabyte, two terabyte, four terabyte drive as their backup drive, right? Or their yeah. games drive, yeah. right? Very common. In this case, all you need to do is insert this into your system with one of the spare PCI Express slots. And unless you don't have any slots, uh, which is very rare these days because no <laughs> yeah. one's running SLI anymore, which is multiple graphics cards. They're running one graphics card now. Yeah. You'll have a secondary slot that you can throw this in there and then copy everything off your hard drive onto this. And now then you can just remove your hard drive and now you have blazing fast performance because this right. SSD goes up to 35 megabytes per second for read and somewhere in the uh, high 2000s for the write speeds. Yeah. So. But once you get everything onto the drive, it's basically your read speeds that are the mm. most important and it's gonna be fast. It's gonna be probably the most noticeable upgrade that you will get because now when you open Photoshop, it's like immediate. Yeah, yeah. loading up files you know? be faster, transferring files be faster, especially if you're transferring two, three gigs of video files, yep. you'll notice the difference. And yeah. faster than your SATA SSD by far. Like a, a SATA SSD has a maximum throughput of 550 megabytes per second through yeah. the SATA 3 interface, which is common on a lot of older mm -hmm. systems without a, uh, a PCI Express NVMe um, slot on their motherboard. Winston has a board over there. That's right. He can show you. Yep. It's the slot that's under. Underneath the graphics yeah, card on top. Here. Underneath or on top. And you can see these uh, heat sinks here have these extra slots. So you, normally, for example, one motherboard will have one, two, three, at least two. M.2 slots uh, for those SSDs, or of course that of ports here. But yeah. Um, but yeah, it's quite simple. You um kind of screw the heatsink, place that in there, and away you go. These are so, the newer ones. So in this case, yeah. you don't have any of those slots, or you might have one, and it's already taken up with the uh, with the system. This is the way to add more slots. Yeah, that's right. Right. It's, this is uh, a way to good. add another slot to it. These cards are cheap. Uh, if you didn't buy it, I had this kicking around, but I've also purchased some in the past. They were no more than $30 and yeah. they go all the way up to PCI Gen 4. Yeah. So in, in some, some cards have two or even three M.2 slots. Yeah. So, so you can actually have multiples as well too, but keep in mind, it does cut the bandwidth in half. Oh yeah. So you don't want to do that unless you absolutely have to, or you're really starved for storage. But in this case, <laughs> this is great. This is this is one of the, the pro tips that I wanted to share with you because it gets you storage that the latest systems have without breaking the bank because you just buy the adapter, you don't need a new motherboard, you've got all the mm. fastest possible storage. And if your GPU and your CPU are keeping up, here you go. This is this is the next step. 
And of course, we've also got RAM. Uh, your system might actually be able to take advantage of a lot more RAM. Go ahead and upgrade that and use the, the Kingston guide. In fact, if they don't have it on their, on their guide, what you can do is you can, again, message the bot and it will actually uh, give you an answer later to see what, what options are available. Or if you have a really cool retailer mm. that's willing to work with you, go ahead and uh, see uh, work with them and see what, what options are available. Maybe they'll let you take home some, some memory at home uh, you know, as a loan to see if it'll work out for you. Yeah. And then, uh, you, then you can purchase it as an upgrade later on. So right. uh, check with your local independent computer shops as well too. Right. One advice is that uh, don't get the fastest RAM because the fastest RAM may not be any good. What you need to do is match the RAM speed with your existing RAM, because uh, even if you buy fast RAM, it will run at the default lower speed of your existing RAM. That's right. And that's so. something that I wanted to, I will talk about uh, briefly in the laptop guide, because that's actually more important in that space, because there are fewer settings in laptops mm -hmm. and everything like that. Uh, one other thing that you can definitely do, uh, actually two things. Number one, if you have a weaker graphics card in your older system and you want to upgrade, chances are the the <laughs> the power supply is going to be a little bit weak. You're going to want to upgrade that first. So check with the major players out there that have power supplies uh, to pick up a really reasonable upgrade. In the case of systems that, are, that mm. I use, which are pre-built, uh, Dell, for instance, my Dell Precision, they have power supplies that are more powerful than the one that it came with. So I actually started with a 650, which is woefully inadequate for a large graphics card. Mm. You need an 850 and above. I was able to get an 850. It was plug and play, plugged right in. And then I was able to upgrade to a GT, uh, an RTX 3060 mm. Ti in my system. And it's doing very good. I was also able to upgrade the CPU. However, I found out something very interesting. Oh, okay. And that's the fact that when I upgraded from a four core Xeon to a six core Xeon, things got a little bit hot. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, yeah. now I'm not saying that every system will be an easy upgrade, but I reckon, I do recommend also upgrading your CPU cooler. Oh yeah. Uh, if you can, um, check with a lot of forums and everything like that. Mm. Uh, sometimes you can actually adapt the water cooler to it. In my case, I could not because it uses a slim ILM, which is basically a very narrow version of a uh, of, of a uh, CPU cooler, which is not the normal round slug that you get okay. with most all-in-one water coolers that you want to put in there. So I actually had to go to our friends at Noctua. These are the guys that make the funny looking fans. They're beige and red. <laughs> beige and brown, yeah. Beige and brown. And um, <laughs> they actually had a CPU cooler that fit 99% correct. And all yeah, I did yeah. was I took um, I took some spacers and I spaced it to fit into the, oh, the, the holes. This was a tip that I found out from a, uh, a website called Green PC, okay. and they take Dell systems or HP systems. They actually offer all the upgrade paths for that. I highly yeah. recommend you have a look at that. It's a uh, it's a really great site, uh, Green PC. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but if you look it up, you'll see upgrades for, for T3610, which is where I kind of start started on this path, mm -hmm. uh, finding out what I could do with the CPU cooler. And if you upgrade the cooling, well, guess what? A good cooler will also provide you with problem three free running, and it won't throttle the, the CPU. Now, what that means is that if you're rendering a huge file mm. and it gets to a certain temperature, the CPU has to scale back to keep itself from frying. <laughs> Overheating, yeah. Yeah, so with a proper <laughs> CPU cooler on even a desktop system that is older or a pre-built system, you avoid that completely. It's not just for a CPU upgrade, it can be for thermal issues as well too. And while you're at it, upgrade the fans in your system as well too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, thermal rule is have a fan in the front, to blow cold air in, a fan at the back to exhaust all the hot air out all on the top. So if cold air in, hot air out. Yep, blowing so past the CPU cooler right. if you don't have a water cooler. And these types of upgrades, these types of things, a lot of um, system manufacturers, they may not put the fan in there. There, it might be missing. You might just have one. You might just, just have one, and that's yeah. inadequate. If you want to get more cooling, add the second one in the yeah. front or add another one in the top. Really easy. Good yeah. fans, probably anywhere between $10, $20. For the cheaper ones, yep. and then you got some nice fancy ones with the RGB and all that kind of stuff, which goes up a little bit more. Yeah, but. and because <laughs> I'm, I'm into use systems, I'm practical, I would never do that. <laughs> all right. Uh, what about software, right? Software yeah. is also a really big way to increase the performance of your system, maybe and also give you more features. So for example, Windows 11 came mm. out, a lot of older systems weren't actually compatible with it yeah, initially, right? 
Yeah, you find a lot of the old systems will will not work Windows 11 because they have something called a TPM, which is basically a security uh, module that they built onto the motherboard. So the older motherboards, all the older system, pre-built systems before like three, four years ago may not have this TPM chip. So therefore you can't run Windows 11. So the only thing that you do is just Windows 10. Uh, or, you can keep Windows yeah, 10. It's going to be supported for another couple of years for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but you want to get to Windows 11 because then you get all the latest features to play with. It just makes your system feel new again <laughs> for no other reason. Does it work better? It works better now because they've refined it along the way because mm -hmm. it seems to be a lot smoother. And with a late with their latest upgrade, uh, I think I think it's pretty good. Now, in order for you to get the upgrade for your system, I did a guide oh, when, when, when right. in October of like 20. Yeah, a couple of years ago when when uh, the COVID during COVID, during COVID right okay. when when Windows 11 launched, and uh, that guy had over 1.2 million views uh, <laughs> because I showed people something that they didn't think was possible because you get this nag on Windows 10 it's like sorry your system's not compatible like what do we, what do you mean this is free, well uh, I did the way that I did it was kind of a little bit hacky because I had to edit things but there's a piece of software out there called Rufus. Right. And Rufus actually allows you to take an image of Windows 11 that you download directly from Microsoft site and engineer it or sorry, strip out some things inside to check for TPM and also support the processors. Yeah. And then you're able to upgrade to Windows 11 using a standard USB key like this. Uh, oh, interesting. Like this Kingston Duo. Now, some laptops, desktops, they only have a USB-C mm -hmm. port on it mm -hmm. these days. So this is a really great drive from Kingston that offers both USB-A and USB-C. It's um, tiny. Yeah, it's tiny. And it goes up to 256 gigabytes wow. and beyond in, in capacity. But aside from this, once you load up uh, your version of Windows 11 onto this from Rufus, you basically flash it on, onto here. Mm. You can install Windows 11 onto most PCs. Yeah, it's a workaround. That's it is around. a workaround. Yeah, yeah. Now, keep in mind, a workaround is a workaround. We're not saying that you should do this, but it is one fun way to get more performance out of your system uh, that gives you the latest features. Mm. Uh, mm. Other ways that you can you can get more performance is to not run Windows at all. You can run Linux. There's a bunch of distributions that you can play with. But if you're trying to get work done and you want just something new, yeah. the operating system upgrade is a good way to go. Having said that though, another great way to get more performance is to stay Windows 10 and just do a clean install. Wipe everything out. Yeah. Make sure that you keep an eye on your Windows key. Or if you've logged into uh, Windows, uh, the Windows uh, control panel on, on their website, it should show your it should show your system already. So as long as you log into your system with your Windows uh, login, it'll keep a record of that so that when you reactivate your system, it'll actually figure it out from your online profile and restore everything. That's pretty decent. Yeah, so yeah. that's really yeah. decent way. So just a couple real, real quick ways for you to uh, get more performance without technically without spending any money because operating system upgrades and restores or clean clean installs are free except for your time. And uh, I think we've covered a, a lot of things on the desktop side. Anything we missed? No, that's pretty much it. Uh, again, if you get a chance to upgrade a RAM, do that because that's probably the cheapest way. Uh, as apart from the uh, OS uh, um, refresh, uh, RAM is fairly cheap now these yeah. days. So you'll be able to upgrade and get better performance. Uh, again, don't get the high speed RAM, only match the RAM speed that you have in your existing system. So that will uh, probably help a little bit more. Great, okay. Well, I'm glad I didn't miss anything here. Mm. Uh, so what about laptops? L laptops you, are- Yeah, you've just recently bought one. Yeah, so like, I mean- Tell us your story. We briefly discussed this in our back to school guide. This is, again, mm -hmm. something that we talked about for desktop systems as well too, because desktop systems, when you buy from a manufacturer, you can buy in different configurations. Mm -hmm. Obviously go for the best GPU and CPU that you can afford, but drop everything else on the on the configurator, <laughs> all right? Uh, smallest SSD, smallest RAM, because you know that you can go to a, uh, a qualified vendor like Kingston and actually find the upgrades at reasonable prices over what yeah. the manufacturer is charging because they charge a premium and Kingston already tests this this memory. So you know that they're gonna back you up separately from, from the manufacturer as well too. Mm. Uh, keep in mind though, is you're up, upgrading anything that you do have to remove some stickers that are warranty stickers. Yeah. But having said that though, they can't, if they can't prove that that upgrade did something to your system, then they have no reason to deny you warranty, but it does make things a little bit more muddy in the waters for warranty purposes, okay? Mm. So keep that in mind. Uh, we're not saying do it, do it, but if you're adventurous, do it, but with some caution, all right? So laptops, um, I, I did buy a new laptop, you're yeah. right. I bought one that actually, when I researched it, it's this guy right here. 
the it's the uh, it's got the Intel Intel right Intel Core what is it Core something. So this is the uh, Gigabyte Aero 16. Okay, I'm not specifically recommending Gigabyte as a brand. I, I do not have any affiliation with them. Uh, I could recommend an Asus or whatever, but there were some key things in this laptop that made it more advantageous for me to go to. Uh, I looked at the spec sheets. I looked at the teardown guides, and this is something that you can do if you're looking for a laptop that you mm -hmm. can actually upgrade. Just because you can buy the least amount of memory and the least amount of SSD when you configure it for a cheaper desktop or laptop experience doesn't mean you should if you're looking for a, a upgradable laptop. Because if you're buying an Apple, and this is why we, we can't really talk about them because there's no way to upgrade them, <laughs> you're stuck with that configuration for the rest of your life until you get rid of it. So we're going to be focusing our discussion on PC laptops. now. This laptop in particular, mm. I was looking for something that offered massive amounts of memory and massive amounts of storage with the laptop, with the CPU and GPU that I wanted. So in this case, this one has a 3060 um, Ti. I think no, 3060 series. No, it's actually a 40 series. Oh, maybe it is a 40 series. Yes. 40, so, it's a 40 series. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. It's a GeForce <laughs> RTX Studio Series. It has a Core i7 CPU inside, um, latest clock speed, uh, biggest clock speeds, 12th gen, because uh, 13th gen is out now, and uh, has a beautiful 16 inch OLED yeah, screen. I was quite jealous. You know, actually. and <laughs> it has some things that you find but, advantageous. For example, it has two SSD NVMe slots that oh. run at PCI Gen 3 and above. So you can actually have two SSDs that run at 7,000 megabytes per second Wow! inside, and it does. It has two one terabyte sticks already inside. You just upgraded. Uh, I upgrade, I'm, I'm upgrading one of them to two terabyte because I need oh, more storage, okay, okay. but I'm going to keep both of them in here. Uh, the other thing too is that I, it didn't have enough RAM for me, so I am going to. So, well, how much RAM did it come with normally? This com comes with 32 gigabytes because it's a, and that's something that you don't do with your uh, laptop memory. Um, but it had came with 32 gigabytes yep. and it was populated both slots. So because it's populated both slots, you get dual channel mm -hmm. uh, configuration. And that's what you want in a laptop because if you put just one stick in there, it's going to run at a slightly, slightly slower speed. Right. So in this case, uh, I wanted to go to 64 Upgrade. gigabytes. So this. this is a DDR5 kit. Okay. Uh, that is uh, 64 gigabytes from Kingston. Kingston does list this laptop and it, told me every single upgrade that I okay. could do on this laptop. Uh, there were some theory options, which uh, is Kingston's uh, gaming line. There, were, it, was, it was very complete for this laptop because again, Kingston works for all the major, major players. They send out the laptops for evaluation, they test them, mm -hmm. and that's how you kind of get these tested, worry-free upgrades from Kingston because they go out there and they talk to everyone, right? And sometimes they have such a good relationship that they just keep that going for upgrades these, down the road. These memory kits are, um, are available on their website. And is it cheap to upgrade? And well, the, one of the nice things about Kingston is that they work with all the retailers in Canada to offer their memory upgrades. They don't sell anything particular online, but they do tell you where to get the things from right. your local retailers. Uh, usually they list the bigger ones, but don't discount your your local uh, mom and pop shops. They do have these memory mm -hmm. upgrades available and they can be competitive because they also get them from the same distributors in Canada, right? Yeah. So these memory upgrades and everything are, are you know, like really easy to do because they're just, they're dropping upgrades for a laptop like that. You just have to, you know, open it up. And there's lots of different guides mm. on the internet that you can, and that's where I found out how easy it was to upgrade because I looked at the guide. I'm like, damn, that's easy to upgrade. Yeah. It's so easy. It's just kind of uh, unhook the existing one. It just kind of pops up yeah. and you unslot it and then you kind of like replace those. So you have two slots, all right? Yeah. Two slots. You okay. have two slots, but before you even get there, you need the right tools. You're not just using your Phillips mm. head screwdriver. So I needed a, a toolkit like this, and these are cheap. They're like 20 bucks on yeah, Amazon. Nice. They have all the bits and everything like that. And just take your time, and you know, you're, you're gonna have to get it open first. Now, watching those guides, you're gonna figure out that some, some of the manufacturers like to glue screws <laughs> underneath a sticker <laughs> so you don't break your system. So be, just take care. Be careful, and once you have it open, yep. this is nothing. Putting these in is nothing. It's just as simple as slotting them in. Oh yep. yeah, absolutely. Yep. And uh, that's why I absolutely love these types of upgrades because they just offer value immediately because now you can run a hundred slots in Chrome. 
versus oh, 50. Yeah, you, you, you'll notice the performance in, uh, difference right away. Yeah. Yeah, from 16 gig up to 32. And if you upgrade to 64, uh, and of course your Windows allow you to run at the, you know, that capacity. Plus, if you're running a lot of uh, mission critical applications, content creation, you'll notice the difference immediately. Yeah, yeah. You'll, yeah. you'll want match slots. Now, this is where some manufacturers do things a little bit differently, but let's go through the checklist of things that you need mm -hmm. to, in order to be able to upgrade the laptop. So number one, not all laptops have memory slots, like all Macs, they're soldered, right? So make sure that you actually have two slots or one slot free. What that can mean, one slot free, is that the first slot is soldered. Like in the case of Asus laptops, they're all first slot soldered. Yeah, like mine. The second mm -hmm. slot is where you upgrade. Having said that though, once the first slot is soldered, it's fixed at a certain memory uh, size, so 16 gigabyte, eight gigabyte. Because the memory modules may not match, you don't get dual channel. That's right. You have to have the same capacity in both slots. So if you have a 16 gigabyte laptop with a, with a spare slot, you if you put 32 gigabyte in there, you're gonna get more memory but you're not going to be able to get dual channel. But if you add a 16, you're going to be able to get dual channel performance with less memory. So that's something to keep in mind when you do the, do the upgrade. And Kingston does sell single upgrades because they list all the major pay players, they've tested them, all right? Uh, not all laptops have NVMe mm -hmm. slots that are accessible. They might be soldered. Yeah, or just one. Or just one, Yeah, right? Like in the case of mine, it's just one. Yeah. And in this case of that, you it should be upgradable, but it's not always the case. So again, Kingston will list all the applicable upgrades, which gives you a key to how the if mm. whether or not the system is compatible. And also, uh, if you have more than one slot, it gives you the way a way to actually just drop the like if if I'm if my system came with only one, I'd be able to drop in a, a, an NV2 in the second slot, no problem. Okay. Yeah. So those are shortcuts that you can take. Now, not all laptops also use standard uh, memory. Uh, like the Microsoft Surface uses a really funny, weird <laughs> version of an NVMe, uh, which is the same, similar to their Xbox. Xboxes use a form of NVMe that's like small. Yeah, it's it's like a the different. It's just, it's the same standard uh, interface, but yep. it's different in size, different packaging. So, so yeah. you have to be aware of that as well too. Mm. Microsoft Surfaces do allow you to upgrade, but very difficultly you have to it like those are not worth upgrading those are basically <laughs> soldered okay so they're, they're they have uh business versions of their surface pros that have a slot available but you not only have to find that uh yeah. memory and it's very expensive but you also have to dig around and you know yeah uh pre-built laptops like those from dell hp they 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 go in the apple way yeah in terms of like not letting you upgrade uh, manually um because they want the business Right, that kind of thing. But uh, if you buy like um, a gaming laptop from Azus, Gigabyte, MSI, uh, the chances are you'll be able to upgrade those, no problem. Yeah, yeah. I'm also gonna throw Dell in there as well too, because Dell is a, is a major player as well too. And this laptop, I recently just upgraded with all Kingston. So in this particular laptop right here, which is a mm -hmm. Dell 9550, which is circa 2016, 2017, uh, this is running DDR4 memory. This is run uh, like, just when it came out. This yeah. is running NVMe SSD inside. I took the 16 gigabytes that came with, uh, couldn't buy eight gigabytes, unfortunately. Uh, and then I upgraded it to 32 with Kingston memory modules. I also upgraded the anemic 256 gigabyte SSD inside, which saved me some money uh, and upgraded it to a two terabyte wow. NV2, okay. which is great. And then I took the 256 gigabyte uh, NV2, uh, not NV2, sorry, the Toshiba that was in here. Uh, and I put it in here. Oh, the external drive. I put it into like a little, oh, okay, yeah. Inco so, external uh, closure. So you can put it into external closure such as this. Like this is a, uh, this is a, uh, I love this one. This is an Asus ROG enclosure. It's built of billet aluminum. It has a PCI Express Gen 2. Right. Or no, it's PCI Express Gen 2, uh, USB 3.0. USB 3.2 Gen 2. Gen 2, So okay. it will run at 10 gigabits per second, so 1,000 megabytes per second. Nice. Uh, and it also has, uh, the whole enclosure is aluminum, so it's like a heatsink. Heat so it has all of the uh, all the thermal, thermal pads, pads and everything. Yeah. You just put that down. And it's almost waterproof because it has this closer, closing system that basically, like it uses a, a SIM card ejector to open it. So oh. it's not easy to open, but once you close it down, yeah, it's pretty much bomb proof. 
Okay, so you right? can use uh, take your out old existing uh, MEMV uh, SSD yeah. and put it into an enclosure and use it as like an external drive. Yeah, just uh, if you can use this to after the fact to clone your system onto your new drive using cloning software of your choice. Mm. And then you can use your new operating system on your new drive to format this and turn it into really competent external storage at maximum speeds. Now there's tons of them out on the market, but what you yeah. want to do is you want to buy something that's reputable. I've tried a lot of different ones and they have all sorts of different conflicts with different controllers. At least this one, Asus makes all the controllers, AS Media, right? Yeah. So that's Asus. And yeah. uh, this is just an AS Media controller. It's durable uh, and it's it's a great way to upgrade. But in case you can't upgrade your storage mm. or your SSD, and this is more for the Mac people out there or people who've bought slim PC laptops, mm. there's another way to do it. You have something. Kingston actually offers oh, two right. options here, right? External so SSDs. depending on your system that mm -hmm. comes with either Thunderbolt 4 or a Thunderbolt variant of the past, uh, this drive is called the XS2000. This yeah. one supports speeds of up to 2,000 megabytes per second. Read, read and write-ish. Wow. And uh, it'll support um, Thunderbolt 4, which is technically USB 3.1 Gen 2 times 2. Gen 2 times 2. All right. Yeah. So that's yeah. 20, 2,000 megabytes per second, 20 gigabits per second wow. of bandwidth. If you don't have that type of a system, this is kind of overkill. <laughs> <laughs> now it is now if you if you are in a durable environment where you actually need a uh, IP55 rated water resistant dust proof drive, go for this one. It has a cover on it; it's rubberized. It will take the shock. But if you're just looking for storage that's fast mm -hmm. as an upgrade, and you're running out of desk, uh, and you're running out of uh, of of, of uh, hard drive uh, SSD space, the XS1000 is a great choice from from Kingston. These are small; like this oh, yeah. is barely the it's. Rex is a little bit taller than this guy. Here you go. This is an iPhone for comparison. Yeah, here's an iPhone for comparison. And you will be able to use this with the iPhone 15 for- oh, uh, All right, just for, plug it in. Yeah, just plug it right in for the uh, for the Cinema Raw. <laughs> the, like, pro Raw. Pro, pro Res Raw. Pro Res, um, pro res So raw. you'll need some of these. Uh, and this is a great way to go because this is USB 3.1 Gen 2. Gen 2. Single. So it runs at 1,000 megabytes per second, which is 10 gigabytes per second, roughly. Yeah. So it's, it's plenty fast. fast. It's fast. It's as fast as uh, any SSDs you can get right now for an upgrade, right? Yeah. For stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So if you have a system that's slim, uh, that has the GPU that you want, that has the CPU that you want, but not the storage that you need because it's soldered to the motherboard. So maybe that's a way for you to save money is to go for a smaller internal SSD and mm. just put all your projects on an external drive. And this actually isn't a bad way to go because you can you can edit like 4K, 6K video off of yeah. this immediately. It works. Games will come off this fast, uh, of, of course, as well to you. So not mm. a big deal. Yeah, one thing about laptops, uh, don't forget, is that, again, uh, remember Steven hold up his Dell as a DDR4 RAM, yeah. right? Uh, his newer one uses DDR5 RAM. So the same yeah. thing with desktops. Laptops also have uh, variants, DDR4 and DDR5, and they're not compatible both on desktop or laptop. So for that, you make sure you double check Kingston's website and all the QVL lists to make sure it's compatible. Now I want to give you all a free upgrade that is basically agnostic to any mm -hmm. system. Any any laptop that you have deserves this upgrade. Okay? Yeah. And there's two of them. Number one, this this laptop, this Dell, when I opened it up, oh my God, there was a dust storm inside. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Full of dust, okay? So what I did before I did any upgrades was I actually did two things. I took all mm. of the dust out of it. Uh, pro tip from Kingston uh, USA, our friend over there said that you, I know that everyone does this, but when you're using compressed air, don't make the fans go, <laughs> it could actually break them. <laughs> I know that's fun and everything like that, but he said, don't do it. So pro tip on that, don't do it. Uh, if you have dust that's not coming off, use a Q-tip, just wipe wipe with a microfiber cloth and get all the dust and then start blowing it with the with the fan held in place. That's yeah. what he said. Yeah, okay. So you don't have to actually use a, a air compressor. You can just use those, um, those squeezy ball things. You seen them? Oh yeah, like there's the slime balls that you use for cleaning the vents in yeah. your car. Okay. So those are cheap, like on Wish or Amazon. You can definitely use those. Uh, that's another way for a mm. physical uh, removal of dust, which you might need depending on how bad this thing <laughs> is. So I did that first. 
Yeah, okay. yeah. Clean the dust off when you can. Yeah. The um, second thing mm-hmm. that I did, which is also free, is while you're in there, and if you have the heart for this, and I know that uh, this this is one way to get the thing that I'm going to talk about, is that you should be looking at taking the heat, heat sink off your GPU and your CPU. If you don't have a GPU, it's going to be your CPU only, and taking the heat sink paste off with alcohol and repasting it. Chances are Dell or any manufacturer put way too much on there. <laughs> it's actually insulating the CPU core, not... <laughs> taking the heat away from your CPU core, throttling your, your, your CPU. So it actually reduces performance. So yeah. by removing the, C, the existing CPU paste or the GPU paste and putting new stuff on there and then reseeding everything again, it will increase the performance of your laptop for rendering tasks or even games because it no longer has to throttle. And lower temperatures. And lower temperatures. What, what you'll find that is that if you're having your laptop on for a long, long, long time, like, 70 hours work, you'll yep. notice it heats up quite a bit. So fan spin up. Fan spin up and stuff like that collects dust and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So, you know, yeah, definitely if you can, uh, I would say I'll probably do it maybe a year after, just to, just in case. Yeah. Because <laughs> you Every- yeah, a year after your warranty is anyway. Yeah. Like of. when your warranty is up, <laughs> do that right away. You're yeah. gonna increase the performance of your system oh, yeah. immediately. And at that time, you might even think about doing a, a, some additional mm. CPU uh, or, or not CPU, sorry, <laughs> uh RAM or SSD upgrade at the same time. The other thing too is that you're gonna need the paste. Oh, yeah, definitely. And pro tip, if you want paste for free, here's how you do it. If you go to a computer store that installs or builds a lot of custom PCs, they're gonna have (laughs) tubes of these in a bin somewhere. They don't want these around, technically. They'll never use any of this. uh, Like, they'll never use it. So ask them if they have any spare tubes of this. If they're a really good shop, they'll just give one for you for free. Mm -hmm. And there's enough in here to repaste a CPU and a GPU in most laptops because you only need the size of a rice grain to do that. Yeah. What manufacturers are putting in there, it looks like you can do 10 laptops, right? Because it squishes all over the place. You will thank you after doing that because your system will run really nicely. And mm. on that topic um, of free things, uh, we talked about this in, in the desktop system, both for new systems uh, as well as older systems. And that's the fact that you can actually upgrade your operating system. So you can do the Windows 11 thing if you have a TPM 2.0 chip. It's a little bit more sketchy for a laptop because if it's not quite compatible, laptops are a little bit more susceptible to, to yeah, you know yeah. like w- wacky issues because desktop systems are more supported. Or you can just do a clean install. Clean install works Free. all the time. <laughs> Free all stuff. Time. Yeah, I, right? I usually do it at least once a year. I know it's a pain in the ass, right? But hey, a clean system runs a lot better when you have all that junk, because you're gonna be installing stuff, uninstalling. You're gonna be uh, installing drivers here and it like driver yeah. files, orphan files everywhere. Oftentimes, or, yeah. the first one or two years of you owning a desktop system, you're just trying to figure out what you actually use it for. Mm. Once you figure that out, wipe it clean, and uh, make sure that you get the latest drivers for everything and just start from scratch because you're gonna have a better experience because everything just sort of seems to work more snappy and everything like that. It's just the strangest thing that when you do an OS upgrade, it just just seems better, right? <laughs> and it's free. Uh, it's just a bit of your time. I mean, it's not going to be an uh, immediate thing for someone that's doing it the first time, but once you do it a few times, mm-hmm. it's actually very, very fast. So uh, for me, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm downloading all these clients. I'm downloading uh, Windows. Everything's updating in the background. I'm installing uh, the Adobe Creative um, installer and then I'm installing all my Adobe Adobe apps and then all the drivers from Nvidia and whatnot. Uh, in this case, I would be using the studio version of the drivers, not the gaming drivers. And of course, battle.net if I want to play, you know, Diablo <laughs> 3 or something like that, or Diablo 4 or something like that, right? So it just it's just a better experience. Oh, yeah. And you might even find that you can reclaim some space on an SSD. So if you were on the borderline of needing an a, 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 a RAM, uh, sorry, a SSD upgrade, mm. but you're like, huh, you know what? If only I just got rid of another 50 gigabytes, I'd probably be fine. <laughs> you might make it, and then you can spend the money on a better RAM upgrade. Yeah, I, I like the um, uh, taking the old existing M.2 SSD, yeah. which is maybe like 256 gig or half a gig, half terabyte, and you can put that into an external enclosure That'll give you then an external drive, which you can basically store your files, which yeah. is great. And like it's that. infinitely upgradable. But I guess one thing that I should probably also mention is that 
if you wanted to buy an NV2 and you match it up with this, you've got a really awesome external solution as well too yeah. from that. Mm -hmm. I mean, this goes up to 35 megabytes per second, uh, 3,500 megabytes per second yeah. of, 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 a read, of, of read and mm -hmm. then writes well over 2000. You'll never saturate a USB 3.2 Gen 2 by two bus. It will, it, it, the connection will never max out. So there's, the, there's, there's one way to do it yeah. as well too. I, I've seen people edit directly off these external uh, drives. I um, edit directly off these. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's no problem. It's uh, in fact, make an extra backup and then just start editing on here. Make sure that you have software that will sync once you plug the other drive mm. in, it'll just synchronize the changes and then and then you're good to go. Uh, it's such a fun, it's just, it's such a, not, not just fun, but you know, like hopefully we inspire you to have fun by doing some of these upgrades and with caveats and everything like that, make sure you just do the research, watch the videos on iFixit, oh, yeah. go to YouTube and do watch a teardown video of your exact laptop. I watched an Aero 16 teardown of my entire laptop. I feel so confident about doing <laughs> any upgrade in it. But if you aren't willing to do it yourself, um, and this is still cheaper, go to your local mom pop, um, you know, like computer shop. Yeah. Buy the parts from them. They may even just do the upgrades for you for a nominal charge, mm. right? Because it doesn't take long, but because they've seen so many of these laptops done so often that in skilled hands, you're going to have fewer issues and sure. they will warranty their work too, right? So I think that's basically it for our laptop and yeah. desktop guide. And if there's something that we haven't covered for you, and hopefully there's some really great tidbits of value, especially the the, the operating system things, right? Yeah, like a, a clean install is actually completely underrated. Anyone can do that if you just wipe out your system and start it all over again, uh, as long as you make good backups. So if you have you know a good external drive, make sure you <laughs> grab all the files that you need and throw it on there. Um, that's a really good pro tip for anyone, oh, yeah. any system. Uh, the second one would be uh, Windows 11. Windows 11. Uh, Third one would be cleaning out your system of dust bunnies and everything, <laughs> repasting your CPU. And uh, we didn't mention this part, but even if you have a desktop system or or a Dell system or any system, if you don't want to replace the CPU heatsink, just replacing the paste can make a double digit increase in the performance of that system as well too, because it just won't throttle on you when you need mm. it the most, right? Yeah, so yeah. these are these are really fun, fun, good tips, and I hope you get some value out of it. And I hope that if you have more questions that you ask me or Winston, uh, Winston is uh, still running his uh, website for oh. free hardware and stuff like that. And uh, he'll know a lot <laughs> about what to do for newer systems. And right. I do hold the record for building a PC in a record time of four minutes and 36 seconds. Yeah, well, well so that's fast. it. That was uh, super fast. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, the, I can help. Yeah, it's the thing about the motherboard I, I mentioned earlier. A lot of people don't know or don't realize that, oh, there's four slots. I'll put it into first two slots. Mm -mm, okay. Show them. Make yeah. sure they, they see So, in like, case you're, like I said, you're watching from home. Like I said, there's, there's, there's four slots here. Just make sure that you put them into uh, slot A, A2 and B2. Put them in together like that is no good because then that becomes a single channel. Aha. Uh -huh. Right? Slots, the two first slots, if you put them like that, it'd be a single channel. And make sure they click as well, too. Yeah, and it'd be a click. It's a nice click to it, right? So let me just show you what the click sounds like. It'd be put that the towards the watch, mic. Listen, listen. Oh, oh so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you have a, a memory a kits with four memory kits, just put them all in, no problem, right? But if you have two memory slots, make sure you put them in A2 and B2. Never put them together side by side because then that becomes a single channel. Right. And you don't want that. And, you know, again, the same thing applies to your uh, desk, mm. laptops as well, too. If you have a single slot that's already populated with a solder DIMM, you should make sure that it matches up for dual channel support. Or if you're just willing to forego that, you need more memory mm. anyway, just put whatever memory module is compatible in there and make sure it's the right type, DDR4, DDR5. Yeah. Even uh, probably not DDR3 because that's going to be a very old laptop, but Older DDR4, laptop. DDR5 is pretty common these days. Mm. And um, oh, before before we get uh, get out of here, uh, I was, just wanted to make sure that uh, everyone knows about our cybersecurity episode. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, with my uh, brother, Yao, right? Yeah. Uh, he works for His Majesty's <laughs> Secret Service, probably, but he can't <laughs> verify that. But uh, if you watch that episode, we're actually doing a special giveaway for people who mm. uh, have had not so great luck with cybersecurity. We want to hear your stories. Yeah. And we want to share maybe maybe there's a solution that you had in place or maybe you've just done something differently. We just want to make sure that people are, are aware of that, you know, pe people like them. Mm. 
uh, people like us that don't pick up their calls, that you know always flush a spam caller in their phones, that we are even susceptible to all these things. So we're giving away uh, one of these guys here. That's it. It's Where the it? Kingston. Yeah, we've oh, got Iron Key. We've got Iron Key uh, from Kingston Keypad 200. These are rated one of the most uh, the toughest. Uh, <laughs> military grade military grade Security. drives to you know break into uh so if you have some information that you want to keep solid like the backup keys for your uh two-factor authenticator and everything like that we've got a few of these to give away uh details are in that podcast you, it's the it's going to be the um probably the previous episode or two and uh just send us uh, a message with uh what your story is mm. Instructions are in there. Details are in the description and everything yeah. like that. And we want to just make sure that someone that needs it in Canada gets one of these. Uh, again, it's open to Canadians because we're working with Kingston, Canada, not uh, Kingston uh, International. So uh, we are sorry for our international guests, but maybe we can make that uh, a different uh, story later on as we grow. Uh, but yeah, the 32 gigabyte version of these King Keypad 200, these are tough to break into. There's so many fun features. Tell them about the cloud stor storage feature. Oh, that's amazing, right? So you can actually register a, as a cloud storage as well. You have a secure backup on there. So if you lose this thing here, you can actually get another one and restore the secure backup from their online uh, cloud back onto the drive, which is amazing, Isn't right? Isn't that something? So, and you can actually create admin accounts and user accounts. So even if you, for example, I give this to Steven and Steven loses his pin, I can reset his pin oh, using the admin account. That's great. <laughs> I yeah, need that. It's, it's great, man. It's this, it's this uh, uh, 32 gigs. I think they come in various sizes up to like uh, like 100, 512 gig as well. So anyway, yeah. but this one is a nice size for 32 gig. Great for storing uh, keys. Passport photos. Passwords, put photos, yeah. personal um, stuff. Driver's license, anything, you, yeah. travel documents, anything that you That's need right. to have a, a secure copy of just in case, just in case you, you need it. It's here. Uh, so I, I wanted to ask, why mm. should people... Why should people subscribe to this channel? Oh, definitely. Because this is a YouTube only and YouTube exclusive uh, podcast. So make sure you uh, subscribe and actually click on that notif notification icon. Because uh, by doing so, you will get our latest uh, shows each and every week on a on a Wednesday, Wednesday at noon. At noon. In fact, there's probably going to be one coming to your <laughs> inbox if you are subscribed already near you. <laughs> and uh, on that note, I want to thank uh, Kingston for helping yeah. us out with this uh, episode, Kingston Rex. I'm Rex. Uh, everything that we that we uh, played with here, um, just so you just so you're aware, just because it's in the packaging doesn't mean we played with we didn't play with it. Uh, <laughs> we do have extras that we were actually playing with offline. So uh, we've tested a lot of these uh, things. I've I've already done an upgrade on my Dell XPS 9550. It works beautifully. My kids are gonna love yeah. playing Minecraft on it and spamming all the uh, Chrome tabs. And uh, yeah, like if there's any Look questions at all, Kingston's going to be probably monitoring our comments uh, in this video. So if there is anything that you need to tell them or anything like that, just leave a comment below so that they know that you care. Yeah. Remember what I told you about uh, Kingston memory are compatible for both AMD and Intel systems, mm -hmm. and they are one of only a few that does that. And look at that. On the label it says Intel and AMD certified. Look at that. They work with all the Dual major Dual channel, players. of course, with two sticks, or you can have, of course, like four sticks. Quad channel. And what's <laughs> what the deficit when you go the quad channel? Uh, slower speeds. But, but more memory. More memory. More memory. It's and okay. more memory is good. Of course. More memory is good for Rex as well, too, because then he can uh, eat. Uh, thank you so much for uh, tuning in for our podcast this week. And uh, we will see you in the next episode. Don't forget mm. to enter our giveaway for the Iron Key. Uh, the episode should be linked in this description. Thank yep. you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. See you soon.